do is kind of walk around the car from the outside, maybe about five, six feet away, because the car looks really good from that distance, let you see it. And then I'll get up real close and show you any of the flaws that I know about, okay? So here we go. Those are not real Alpina rims, by the way. Those are cast 19 inch uh, rims. They're knockoffs. Real Alpina rims would be like worth about as much as this car is. Okay, so I'm gonna get into it. Uh, the worst stuff I know about on here, I'm gonna use the zoom lens, is stuff going on with the front. And if we look underneath here, there's a nice, there's a nice scratch right there, which is in the scratch photos. There's a big chunk of paint missing right there, which I may have missed in the scratch photos. A couple of scratches over here too. It's almost as if I hit like a bush or something that went underneath the car. Um, honestly, Probably the best thing to do is have this repainted. You know, I mean, I even here in Silicon Valley, I've got guys that can do this for six fifty, maybe seven hundred fifty bucks. Uh, let's come around. Headlights look pretty good though, and these headlights are actually special as well. These are adaptive headlights; they actually turn and go up and down. Um, they're pretty, pretty unusual. You will not see these on every seven hundred and sixty Li. That's for sure. Let me see if I can get the the cool name logo right there. There you go. So even these headlights have bragging rights compared to most. All right, so the badge. I have another one of these badges in the car and one of the glove boxes, okay? I, except I can't figure out how to install it. <laughs> so I didn't do it. Uh, the rims. Some of them are clean-ish, or at least pretty clean, like this. There's some stuff there. You can see some rim nets. These rims need to, and you can see my cat found this. Um, there's a little scuff right there. Let's get the focus. There we go. Uh, the point that I'm trying to make is that these rims need to be cleaned with an iron cleaner. And I don't like using that stuff because you gotta be careful with it because if you are not careful, it can um, ruin the paint or the powder coat. Now check it out. There it is, M5 brake caliper and M5 rotor, the real thing. Stockers are about 13 and a half inches. These are 14.7 and much thicker. And those are actual M5 calipers in the front and in the back. Let's keep going. Down the side of the car, let me take it out of zoom. It's actually very straight. I'll let you watch the reflection as we go by. Which is cool. This rim looks good too, except it's a little dirty. But other than that, I'm looking and I don't see any scuffs on this one. And M5 brakes in the back too. Okay. All right. Now, get around to the back. Let's see if we can find any flaws. Oh, why do I have this exhaust system when in the movies it shows uh, chrome tips that are cut out? That's because on the other car I did all that. Uh, these are the prototype tips. This is what I use just to make sure I like the system before I started cutting the car up. And on this particular car, I just had this transferred over a few months ago, and now I'm deciding to sell the car, so I didn't want to get into cutting the car up. You do get the chrome tips, they're really dirty, they need to be cleaned up, or you could just replace them. Uh, if you wanted to, you could just have a muffler shop slip a couple chrome tips over those and just weld them in place and drive. If you wanted to cut this out, what I did was I actually put a piece of wood behind, like up and behind that and clamped it on, and then literally used a hole saw. You know, like, like you know, a hole saw centers itself with a center drill. And like just only like a half moon of cut on each one. And it actually worked great. But I didn't do that to this car, so it's up to you to mess it up and do modifications to it. The rear, I'm not finding anything. Neither am I finding anything on the rear deck lid. Although I know somewhere on here, there's a little baby dent. I found it the other day. I'll send you, I think I've got a photograph of it. There it is. There it is. You see it? Right there. Okay. I got a good painless dent removal guy. I could fix that in no time. Rear window looks great, no chips, no messed up anything. Tail lights look great. I mean, they look, they look new. All right, let's get around here. And also the chrome stuff looks really good too, okay? Uh, this rim is why I know that you gotta be careful with that, um, that 
iron removal stuff because the, the, the clear coat on the powder coat got a little bit messed up. So, I don't, honestly, you could probably have this rim restored for about 100 bucks, most anywhere in the United States. Here in Silicon Valley, it's about 150. Uh, I don't think there's any scuffs on this rim. This side of the car has a couple of very small dents. They're extremely difficult to find. Uh, it's the kind of thing, and there's a little bit of a scuff right here, which I think is kind of semi-permanent. You could probably buff it out. Actually, maybe with some buffing compound, you could get rid of this, I'm not sure. Um, there's a couple of pits right here on the uh, rear mirror. I think the other side's like that too. This is getting a little old and dried out. You could probably put some sort of like plastic restorer on there. It would look good. And I can't find the dents right now. They're really small. And here is another rim. This one has, you know, like I said, some of the iron dust stuck to it. I don't think there's any scuffs on this one. There's the M5 brake. And that's about it. On the hood, if I recall correctly, has no dents, which is really awesome. And actually, no rock chips, which is also really awesome. Actually, it's quite, there's like a teeny, you could have that touched up. You could have that touched up, that touched up. If that's a hole, that is a hole, that touched up. So there's a few. And then this is actually just, the plants around here, the trees just drop this weird sap up like really, really quickly. I just took, this is just from those photographs you saw. And that's, that's how fast that stuff drops off. All right, even across here, things look really pretty good. See what I'm saying? This is the other headlight. It could maybe use a little bit of a buff. You can see it's a little bit hazy, but other than that, it looks great. You know, these, these Xenon headlights, the, the dynamic thing, they look so cool. All right. This guy here, it's hard to say. Actually, this looks more like stuck on bugs, okay? So again, the roof looks great as well. Let's get in here and see if we can find stuff. Um, I'm gonna tell you right now, the most worn place in this car is the driver's seat. And it actually was like that when I got the car, which it's kind of sucked for me. This, this sort of dark cracks in the leather, I'm thinking the dude must've worn shorts all the time or something. The whole seat is pretty dirty. If there's a leather specialist, they might be able to take care of it. Otherwise, you could probably pick up a replacement seat like this on the eBay for like six or 700 bucks, maybe, maybe less. Um, the door sills look really good, considering how old this car is. Even the armrest is a little grimy right here. I did clean it off with a very mild soap. By the way, this is plastic. Um, didn't really get any luck. This is the little cover for this guy. You just need to buy a new one from the factory and pop it in place, there's two teeth. Steering wheel is smooth up here, but has no holes in it or divots or anything like that. The dash looks great. There's no peeling or, or any kind of problems. All of it looks really good. Um, even the center console looks good. Let's go around to the back here. Everything that has to do with these um, shades, they go up and down. I'm sorry, I thought I was doing the other side, <laughs> okay. They all work and they always have worked and they've never failed on me, okay? Back here, everything looks real nice. Again, door sill looks good. Seat looks nice, very clean. It doesn't have any undo wear on here. You see what I'm saying? Oh, let me go back to the front. Sorry, on the front, I forgot to zoom in. This is what I always ask people to do. So yes, as a person gets in and out of the car, this leather over here is much more worn than that on the driver's side. And you have actually a little scuff right here. And this, this leather is definitely more worn than that side. So getting back to here, these seats back here look great. This guy looks great. The refrigerator looks great. This map pocket looks fantastic. That one, not so much. I'll go over there and show that in a bit, okay? Even the backs of the seats look good. And that's a pretty light colored carpet. I put black carpet in here in order to help protect it, but even the carpet underneath looks good. I mean, there, there might be a stain somewhere, so don't get upset if that's the case, but it should be pretty good. Okay. Door looks good. Rear passenger door. This is probably the roughest um, door sill right here. There's a little scuff mark, which if you really worked on it, it might come out. Other than that, the seat looks nice. There's a little bit of markings, I think, that might be from 
the latch system from having a latch, you know, kid seat in here. These might be permanent. I actually haven't tried to clean these off. These might come off. All right. And like I said, this map pocket is pretty stretched out. You could probably buy just this this piece of plastic from BMW or Yard for like a couple hundred bucks. Here we go. This door is where my wife, actually my wife wouldn't really sit here that much. She would sit in the back with my kid when we travel. So it looks great. You get on in there and it looks great. Door sill looks pretty good, but actually this is, that's right. This is the one where there must've been a passenger before me because there's this weird scuff right there, which we didn't do. Let me zoom in. There we go. This guy. Um, so actually this door, this, I mean, pop this off, get another piece from the eBay or from BMW and you're all good. And here is this seat. By the way, even in the front, they've got these cool adjustable things like in an airplane. Same thing with the rear seats. By the way, I'm gonna tell you a secret. Do you wanna know how you can tell if you're looking at one of these cars from far away, if it's got the executive seats in the back? Is because it has these on the rear seats. If it doesn't have those, it doesn't have any of that stuff. All right, um, again, dash looks great. Carpet looks clean. Not bad. Engine bay. Glad you asked. Dude. You reach in here and you grab this guy. Okay, don't just honk on this thing. Pull that up. Motor looks pretty good. Okay, air filter, air filter. The math, this is a math, that's a math. It has no, it has these electronic throttle bodies, but it's more for like braking and stuff because the engine actually doesn't need a throttle body. It's kind of weird. Uh, the open flow tank for the coolant. That's power steering. This is what it looks like. There's no pieces missing. This is stock. This is the way it's supposed to look. And that, that kind of tick 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 sound, that's normal. It's just the way the valve train sounds. And some of the um, solenoids on the side, like for smog and stuff, tick like that. This is one of your cabin air filters. This is the other. Okay. If you want to jump the car or you need to get power from it, this is positive and that's negative. The actual battery is way in the back. Oh, and by the way, I'll tell you a quick story. Actually, I'll tell you a quick story when I get to the back of the car. Seven sixty Li. Oh, there's my iPad cover. Uh, that's the DVD for the nav, and I actually have a glove in there and a little bit of spare oil for long trips. There's a couple of stains, which honestly, if you used Folex, which I highly recommend, it would get them out. Okay. Here is where this, the fuses are. If you lift this up, unscrew it and take it out, and then you just grab this and go tunk and pull it out, you will have the battery. It is fresh. I just installed it because unfortunately during COVID, with the car sitting around, even though I was putting it on a, a, a trickle charger, the battery is enough years old that it did not survive. And the car comes with, this is what the original rims look like, a full-sized spare. Look at that, see there's the battery. Full size spare. So it's not like you got this car from an auction and someone said, hey, full size spare, and uh, I'm gonna take that, you know, or the jack or whatever. I mean, everything is here like it's supposed to be. Even this funny little BMW assistance kit with a first aid kit and a couple of friendly tools, like for a tow, right? When someone needs to pull the car with a cable, right there, you put that in the front of the back. It's all here. And in fact, I've never touched it. So it's basically as if you just went into a little time travel machine and opened that for the first time. And here you go. The other thing that this car has, which we haven't talked about yet, not all of them have it. Honestly, I just really don't know how useful this feature is, but here you go, you ready? Soft closed doors. So you kind of halfway close the door, it will close itself. The back, soft closed doors. On the other side, you want to check your soft closed doors to make sure that they're working. Soft closed door. Okay. This one. Come on. 
all the soft closed doors work. They do, the, they do the thing that they're supposed to do. They haven't failed or anything like that. All the windows roll up and down. The sunroof works. So I decided to save the best for last because the interior of this car is the place you want to be. And frankly, the place you really want to be is in the back seat, starting with these really cool electric roller blinds. So back here is where you want to be in a 760 Li versus any other 7 Series. Part of the reason why is I'm six foot four. Look at all the leg room that I've got here. This is the seat that I ride in, and it's basically got the same amount of leg room. Now watch this. There is room for a, a person to sit in the middle here. There's a little seat belt and all that stuff, and even a little teeny headrest. But watch this. You fold this down, and now you've got buttons. Lots of buttons lots of choices okay I can actually go forward and back you can shoot down here it's a little bit yeah mm -hmm. so forward and back up and down tilt that kind of thing I can actually raise the headrest check it out electrically and you and you can actually have you have, you have, you have control over the bolster too but this is my favorite thing one of these buttons let me see this is the one that basically returns the seat to normal and no that's return to normal this one allows me to select this seat up here. I call it the driving Miss Daisy button because if Miss Daisy is sitting in this seat and she needs a little more room, well, she can move this seat the heck out of her way, which is pretty cool. So it also has two different memory settings for each seat in the back. And if that's not enough, full vented leather in the back. I can actually feel the, the air blowing through the perforated leather already. Can adjust it to three different settings for heat across the bottom and the back here and you can adjust that to three different settings now there's a large storage area here which gets used for kid things and stuff like that a real actual refrigerator between the seats that you can literally store two glasses and a bottle of wine in turn it on and off from here or from the front Okay, so, uh, sitting back here, there's another perk to being in the back versus the front. Take a look up here. Air conditioning climate controls. There's literally an air conditioner in the back as well that runs this system here. You can set it for max right now so you can hear it blow. Fan speed, temperature, the whole nine yards. And it is individually controllable by either side. And there's a nice pop-down mirror here too, which swivels and has a light and allows people to check their nose for boogers or the ladies to check their makeup. Okay, so up front, you have similar looking controls. I've got heat, I've got vent. Now the driver up here has massage, which basically just kind of feels like something is kind of waving across your bottom and your hips while you're driving to help make it so you don't fall asleep and get you know really achy back there. Similar settings, so you've got two different memory settings. Same thing, you can adjust the whole seat including the top part right here, this actually tilts forward and back. So if you're shorter, you can kind of cut your shoulders a little bit. And again, these can, these can both be saved, which is really cool. Um, the other thing that you want to look for on any 7, but especially 760 Li, is this, which is the Adaptive Cruise. Adaptive Cruise is very cool because basically it allows you to hit it, and then suddenly you're following the car in front of you. And you can literally adjust closer, further away, that kind of thing and then hit the brake in order to stop it from doing it, but it will follow the car in front of you. Back then, in 2004, this was kind of mind-blowing. Now I'm sure you could probably get it on a Honda Odyssey, but it's just nice to know that this car had one of everything back in the day. One of the other things that this car has that uh, is pretty cool is in here, there's a Bluetooth controller that basically replaces the old flip phone that this car actually came with. And the Bluetooth controller looks like this. It comes from Motorola, and it was developed in about 2006, maybe 2008, in order to take all the cars that they'd made for Mercedes and Audi and BMW that had these funny little old Motorola flip phones in them, and you insert it in here, and then basically you can pair your phone to this thing using the uh, control in here for the iDrive and literally text and do you know, vocal entry, which I do a lot, dictation. And you can also make phone calls 
and you can actually call up your um, your contacts in there. The other thing that's kind of interesting about this bay in here is that there's actually a little dial here you can turn up and down, and the refrigerator actually would keep like a sandwich or something cool in here as well, which is a pretty cool perk. Okay, uh, something else which is kind of interesting. Regular CD player here, CD changer here. Why do I have a wire hanging out here? Well, in there is actually a little device made by a company called Mobridge, which they don't make this particular device anymore, which replaces the CD changer on the most bus. Now, yes, of course, I probably could come up with a cooler solution than running a cable out the hole here, but I didn't really care. You could probably run it out and up and around. But what does this do for me? Well, I will show you what it does for me. It allows me to play tunes and control things as if I'm basically doing car play right here in my car, including, hey Siri, skip the next song. So if you have, if you have, um, Hey Siri set up on your phone, which you could put your phone in here or your iPad or whatever. See, when you say, hey Siri, it starts to respond, right? Um, it basically allows you to do anything you want, including, hey Siri, launch the Waze application. Siri, launch the Waze application. There's Waze. Now, yes, it's got regular old nav from 2004, which <clears throat> nobody uses. I basically just run Waze right from here, as if I've got CarPlay going, and actually on a bigger screen. So uh, the nice thing is the sounds from Waze actually go through the car's speakers as well. And the thing that I might not be able to demonstrate that well on here, though, is the fact that the subwoofer on this car is killer. I know this is just a phone recording, but when you've got the doors closed and everything else, you're you're hearing some some sonic frequency. It's, it's awesome. What else? Oh yeah, the sunroof. This is actually very easy to just kind of grab and pull in and out like this. And you can pop this open or this is a full on sunroof, which a lot of the newer ones don't have. It actually opens all the way up. And then you can close it. And when you've had enough sun coming through, boom, Alcantara roof. I mean, ceiling, which is really, really nice. Back then, this was a big deal. The other thing to note is that the leather dash is all stitched, okay? So if you look at lesser expensive 7 Series, you're gonna notice that the um, <clears throat> that this is just a plastic dash with no stitching on it at all, which is a nice added sort of a you know luxury thing going on here. Okay, so after that little chat and me starting the motor for the cold start, uh, the motor is actually warm enough that it's safe enough for me to rev it up a little bit and let you hear all the exhaust sounds when it's uh, at idle. 